in light of our upcoming guest, my friend Willis Tant with the local post, she'll be coming in and doing an interview at 1130. And because of the name of her organization and what they stand for and what they represent in preserving the local community and culture, the land, the people, and also look into the future to establish connections in the future, just really trying to help curb things like gentrification and to help the community heal from the historical lines and biases of racism and prejudice that are so prevalent here. They're touching on so many different things. That's what I get from it, but she'll definitely discuss it more as we move forward. But, but just the whole idea of the local pulse. What is a pulse? What is a pulse? The definition of a pulse is a rhythmical throbbing of the arteries as blood is propelled through them, t- typically as felt in the wrist or neck. A single vibration or short burst of sound, electric current, light, or other wave. To throb rhythmically to pulsate. These are all definitions of a pulse. What I want you to think about is the pulse is the the rhythmical throbbing through the arteries as blood is propelled through them is the fact, the proof that your heart is beating and your body is getting the necessary nutrients that it needs to have. So Willis is coming to talk talk to us about being the local pulse. But I want to talk to you about what is the pulse that is running through your life. Yesterday we talked about faith. Today I want to talk about the pulse on this International Day of Happiness. What is the rhythmical throbbing that's running through your veins? What is empowering you to do what you need to do? What is your pulse? What is it telling me? Is it? Are you flatlining? Are you in a place in your life right now where you may be down or feeling negative and you're not really living to your fullest potential so your pulse is not as strong as it needs to be? When someone is going through some distress in their lives, when you go to the doctor, when you see the paramedics show up, the EMT show up, one of the first things they do is check someone's what? what? Pulse. Because your pulse is a representation of how aware you are, how present you are, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. They can tell if someone is dead or alive by what? Checking their pulse. On this Talk Tuesday, as we prepare for the local pulse to come in here and share with us how they are doing things in the Charleston community, because that's one of the purposes of Heart Connections. We're your community station with international inspiration. So we want to know about what's going on around the corner and down the street. We also want to know what's going on on other continents because we care. I want you to think about your pulse. I'm going to read to you the inspirational quote of the day. And I want to read it to you because I want to tie it into your pulse and the the International Day of Happiness. We're going to talk about this more as we go throughout Heart Talk today. But I'm going to reread Day 194. And Day 194 comes from Anchored, Be Blessed Daily, Volume 1, my book. And you can get it in my online store at heartconnections.bigcartel.com, or you can also get it on amazon.com. And it reads, When you live life with selfish ambitions, there's no reward at the end of the race. Don't live your life in vain. Sacrifice permits room for receiving. You may have it bad, but someone else has it worse. Be blessed. That's what I think about when I think about the local pulse. When we can pull ourselves away from only caring about me, I, me, what whatever my agenda is, and looking to others and seeing what's going on with them. What are your ambitions in life? If there is a, a healthy level of being selfish, I believe, because we do have to take care of ourselves and love on ourselves. But when we think about what is the pulse, why are you running your race? What is causing you to keep going in life? What is causing you to keep pursuing the things that you need to pursue? I'm in the studio and I'm looking at a book that LJ has and it looks like Dr. Dennis Kimbrell, What Makes the Great Great. And I had that book for years 
and I didn't even realize what I had. My aunt gave it to me. I did not read it. It sat on my shelf. If it wasn't on my shelf for 10 years, it wasn't there at all. I never read it. I saw it. It looked like something interesting, but I wasn't too interested. At the time, I wasn't into reading. I wasn't into personal development and personal growth. I didn't tie reading the Bible and going to church into self-help and personal development. I didn't realize how all of those things are pretty much working towards the same goal to make me a better person, to allow me to let my light shine. So when I look at that book, I think about what happened when I went back and read it and how I was thinking, man, if I had read this book 12 years ago, my life would have been so different right now. And it makes me think about what was my pulse. My pulse wasn't that strong in that point in my life. My pulse wasn't that strong because I was feeding off of the pulse of others. I was looking for acceptance from others. I was looking for others to tell me that what I was doing was good enough. So I was pursuing a nursing degree and then that shifted to a therapy degree. And I pursued other things along the way because I hadn't truly tapped into my own pulse. And because of that, the blood wasn't flowing through. The the life wasn't flowing through me the way it needed to. And I feel like there are some people that are listening to me that can relate to what I'm saying. You're living, but you're not thriving. You're existing. You've been in survival mode your whole life, and you don't even have to survive anymore. You're in a state where you can thrive, but because you have not addressed This diminishing pulse, your life is lived below its potential. And that's why you're here with Heart Connections, because we have to heal. We have to be enlightened. We have to live authentically, because we have to overcome these circumstances. This stuff is serious. When Willis told me about what she was doing with the local pulse, I got excited, because it it is disheartening to ride through certain areas of town, James Island, Johns Island, Mount Pleasant, and see so much of the beautiful forests and trees. They're gone now. Apartment complexes, storage units, things that I know you have to have growth. There's a time and season for everything. But some of it is excessive. And there are a lot of people that this is happening around that are not happy about it. And they are very scared. They don't know what to do. And with the history of our country, and especially where we are in Charleston, a lot of people in the community feel like it doesn't even make a difference for me to speak out because no one ever listens. When I follow the protocol for people to to tell me, you know, to be heard, I'm still ignored. So why should I even say anything? So, so many people su- suffer in silence. It's a big deal that we have individuals that are interested in being the local pulse. And that's why I ask, what is the pulse in your life? What is that rhythmic throbbing that is pushing through your your veins? What is it? Is it insecurity and fear? Or is it a thrive, a thirst, a hunger, a desire for you to live to your fullest potential? I think about this so much when I think about my new book that's coming out this spring. Help Save Me From My Broken Heart. Your journey to living and loving again. This book took some things out of me. It forced me to address the pulse that I was living my life in. And it forced me to address the reason why. Why was I pursuing the things I I was pursuing? What was my motive behind the things that I was doing? I feel like a pulse is, is the lifeline. The pulse is what nourishes. It's like the water that's running underground that feeds the trees and the plants and that that underground flow, the water that runs to a well. These are the things that, that I think about when I think about a pulse. And I want you to think about your life right now. Last night on Heart Talk, shout out to all of my Heart Talk ladies, all of my sweethearts who were on the call last night. We were talking about where is your faith and understanding that God wants something from you. It's outside of your expectation. It's outside of anything that you could ever imagine. But what is your why? Like, why? Why? 
are you doing what you're doing? Why are you pursuing this? When I was writing the book and just going through the idea of a heart transplant, knowing the family history that's in my family of having heart disease and issues with the heart, I realized that a lot of those issues probably stem from emotional dishonesty and other things that were causing a physiological issue in my life. And that's why I had to get clear on the pulse and, 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 and understand what the pulse is in my life, what's driving it, and what may be hindering it from being as strong as it can possibly be. So we'll be back with more Heart Talk. On the next hour, I'm excited because we'll have a guest, Willis Tant, with the local pulse. But as we go through the day, we're going to talk more about this pulse and how this pertains to you and your life. Stick around because at the 11 o'clock hour, we have our weather, our word of the day. And we just have a whole lot more. It's going to be a fun show. And as always, 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 we have wonderful music to keep you uplifted and entertained as you go through this beautiful day, this international day of happiness. Let your happiness burn from within. And guess who's going to help us with that? Jasmine Sullivan, Let It Burn. This is Heart Connections with your heart coach, Adelaide Brown. On kinetic hi fi dot com. Thank you for listening in, guys. If this video helped you out in any way, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel and let everyone you know know about Heart Connections. We'll be back.